So far, we've discussed how to represent our transformations mathematically, as well as what visual results we get after applying a transformation. However, there are two issues that must be addressed if we're going to be able to use these transformations in 3D graphics. So first, we know that when transforming uh, geometry, we need to apply a certain transformation to every vertex of the object, right? So let's say we have this cube here, right, defined by these vertices. In order to perform any transformation to it, whether it's a scale, a rotate, or a translate, we are going to need to apply, well, I mean, in this case, if it was a scale, we could just multiply the scale matrix by the XYZ components of each individual vertex, right? So just to be clear, uh, this, this multiplication that we're doing here is between the matrix and uh, the components of individual vertices. However, of course, we know that this is not going to work uh, with, uh, with translation here because this is a vector addition, not a multiplication. So this is where two issues uh, become very apparent. So first of all, well, we know that translation is going to have to follow a different process than uh, scaling and rotation. And that's a bit annoying for our implementation of uh, transformations. The other problem is when we have to do a number of different transformations to uh, our, our piece of geometry uh, all in a row, right? So let's say we had to do uh, a scale, a rotate, and a translate, you know, all in sequence. And we, well, we, we'd have to apply all those transformations to every single vertex, right? So, you know, first we'd have to like scale every single one, then rotate every single one, then translate every single one. Well, this gets extremely computationally expensive. Therefore, we want to rely on the beauty of matrix multiplication to essentially combine transformations together into a single transformation matrix. And then, right, so, so we end up with just a one matrix that we then go ahead and multiply by every component to basically, you know, do all those transformations in one step. And of course, this is going to drastically save on computation time. And so the, the ever pervasive problem of our, our pesky translation here persists, right? This, this just insists on relying on vector addition as opposed to multiplication. So what we need to do here is get translation to work uh, through multiplication as opposed to addition. Thankfully, we can use a clever trick involving four-dimensional space. Uh, and, and in four-dimensional space, we're going to do something called a shear transformation, and then we're going to project the results back into three dimensions. Right? Sounds complicated, right? Uh, so, so, so let's simplify the scenario back to two dimensions to understand how this is going to work. So in order to understand what's actually happening with this four-dimensional shear trickery uh, and, uh, and, and how we're going to use that to actually get a translation to be uh, applied to individual points in space through matrix multiplication, uh, we need to simplify things and discuss uh, two-dimensional space uh, along with another axis that we're going to call... We're going to call it W, all right? So, so here's our W axis, all right? So we've got, we've got X and Y, just standard old two-dimensional space here, and this other weird dimension called W, all right? So it's easy for us to visualize because we're used to dealing with three-dimensional space, uh, but you know when, when we get to three-dimensional space and, and trying to grapple with a fourth dimension, which also will be called W, uh, this, this visualization is really going to help us out uh, in, 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 to understand that. So let's say we just had some point that was uh, on the, uh, the x, y plane here, right? Again, it's just a point in two-dimensional space. Let's say it was right there. Um, what, what, what actually is going to occur here is we are going to consider this point, even though it is only defined, in a two-dimensional space, we are going to consider this point to be defined at the 
W coordinate of one, all right? So you know, let's just, so this is two units over. Let's just try and keep the examples consistent here. So in reality, in reality, um, when we consider this, this third weird dimension here, this 2D point actually exists on the plane where W equals one. Now from here, uh, we're gonna, remember I mentioned this shear operation that we're gonna do in, in, in this higher dimension. So with a shear operation, what ends up happening is basically everything on one side of, uh, of origin uh, kind of gets, gets shoved in one direction, right? So all of these points are gonna get kind of moved over and shoved up here and everything on the other side of origin is gonna get kind of shoved in the other direction, all right? So, all right, now this isn't gonna be hugely technically accurate, uh, also due to the fact that it's really difficult to visualize uh, a four-dimensional transformation, right? But generally speaking, uh, with a shear operation, uh, you know, stuff on one side of origin gets shifted in one direction and stuff on the other side of origin gets shifted in the other direction. All right, so let's, let's imagine that as a result of this shear operation, this point gets kind of shoved in, uh, in, in, in some other, in, in some direction here. So it gets kind of shoved up here. Now remember, uh, visually speaking, we, because this, you know, the, the W coordinate of this value has changed and uh, it's, it's, it's existing in, you know, uh, this W dimensional space. Uh, we can't really visualize what's happened to this point. However, um, because we can visualize a three dimensional shear, we can see that, oh, okay, look at that. It's actually moved a little bit. After performing this W dimensional shear, we divide the x component, y component, and w component of this point all by w, right? So, so again, if we if we think about the 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 new uh, the new coordinates of this point, right? So it'll be you know like x prime, y prime, and w prime. What we end up doing in order to project it back down to the w equals one plane, because remember, two dimensional space exists where w equals one. So in order to, uh, to perform this projection, we just go ahead and uh, divide that by w prime, All right? So w prime now becomes equal to, let's just draw that in there, it becomes equal to one, and we use these newfound coordinates, right? So what we end up with here is, um, is let, let's say, let's call this v, uh, projected, right? So V projected is right down here, projected back into two-dimensional space. Now again, again, full disclaimer, this, this shear drawing that I've done isn't like super technically accurate. It has the general idea right, but this really, the only reason we're doing this is just to get the intuition behind what's happening here. Remember where the original position of this point was. It was somewhere over here, but it got shifted in W dimensional space. When projected back into two dimensional space, hey, look at that. Let's get that purple color. Look at that. It gets, it actually gets projected back into two dimensional space at a different location. So although we've done a W dimensional shear, it actually appears as though the point has moved in two dimensions. Difficult to understand, I know, but uh, let's, let's, uh, let's just hang on to this, uh, this uh, understanding of, of two-dimensional space with respect to another weird dimension, and let's use this to help us understand what happens in three-dimensional space when we perform a shear operation in four-dimensional space and project the point back into three-dimensional space. All right, now to get our translation to uh, be written out as a matrix, 
uh, where we can just we can just apply standard matrix multiplication and get that translation applied through matrix multiplication. We are going to uh, create a homogeneous uh, transformation and uh, insert these uh, the 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 change in x, y, and z at the appropriate place. All right, so here is what it's going to look like. First of all, so I'll draw this down here because this will be this will be the uh, homogeneous matrix for translation. It is going to be a four by four matrix, right? Remember, we are dealing with we are temporarily dealing with four dimensional space here. So what this is going to look like is uh, the identity matrix for this four by four matrix here, just ones along the diagonal. And then at least when, when working in the right-handed coordinate system with column vectors, we are going to put our change in X, we're gonna put that right up here. So let's just draw that like this, change in X, uh, change in Y, and change in Z. All right, so they are going to get positioned right here in the upper right-hand side of the matrix. And then we're just going to have zeros for the rest of these matrix elements. And of course, uh, recognizing that we do have just a just a value of one for this this new uh, W coordinate that we're working with here, right? So again, we can think of this as being this column as being for the x's, the y's. Let's put that as y and z right, x, y, and z columns, and then we have this new w, this fourth dimensional coordinate. We're going to call it w. We do specify uh, uh, this, these values, which will be involved in the four-dimensional shear, and then right down here, we put a 1. All right, and then we can just go right ahead and uh, write our rotation and scaling matrices in the same way in this, this four-dimensional format. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do all of them here, uh, for the rotations, I mean, let's just do a rotation around around X. How about all right? So um, you can you can extrapolate the rest of the rotation matrices uh, just from this one. But let's just show what that's going to look like with this extra W coordinate added on. It's really no big of a deal. Um, if we're if we're rotating around X, that first that first uh, element there for X is going to remain as a one. We're going to have well just zeros for the the rest of this row. Then we'll have the cosine theta. Again, we are working in the right-handed system here. We'll have cosine theta there, negative sine theta right there. Put another zero in there. Uh, sine theta goes right down here and cosine theta goes here. Again, another zero in the W column. And then we just finish off here with zeros and uh, use that value of one along the diagonal for the W column, all right? And again, we can just uh, rearrange uh, these cosine, sine, and the negatives um, for, for, for whether we're dealing with uh, an X rotation, a Y rotation, or a Z rotation, right? The, the, the layout is exactly the same. We are just adding in this extra column and row here for the W coordinate. And of course, for scale, it's, ex it's very straightforward. No big deal whatsoever. The homogeneous matrix for scale is just going to be the exact same thing that we had here before. When we were talking about these scale matrix, it's just going to be your, your scaling factor along X, Y, and Z, just with a 1, again, for the W component, along the diagonal. And then we just fill the rest of this out with zeros. So finally, finally, we have a way of applying translation through uh, matrix multiplication. And so it doesn't matter how many transformations we're dealing with, we can just multiply them all together, right? These, these are all four by four matrices. The number of columns will equal the number of rows of the next matrix. We can just multiply a whole bunch of matrices together and then apply 
a single a single transformation matrix that we obtain from uh, the component matrices. We can apply a single transformation matrix to each uh, vertex of any piece of geometry that we are trying to transform. So there's homogeneous transformations and the matrices we use to perform them.